Good morning. It's Monday morning again, and here we are at the end of June already. Let me introduce myself. I'm Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Christian churches in Iliopolis and Niantic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light, Life, and Love Ministries. This is an outreach for those who are spiritual but not religious or who don't have a church home or affiliation. I'm also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast, and I'm so happy you are here this morning. I go live every Monday morning at 9 o'clock to offer whatever inspiration that I can for your week. <sighs> what a week it's been. What a weekend it's been. There are a lot of big emotions out there. Big emotions, and rightly so. This morning, I want to talk about the one thing that can help keep you healthy spiritually, mentally, and physically. Did you know that there's one skill you can do if you master the skill? You can have profound impacts on your health physically, on your health mentally, and on your health spiritually. And when we don't do this, we can experience a lot of physical symptoms. First of all, um, well, let's talk about these symptoms. Heart disease, diabetes, high cholesterol, higher blood pressure. Who wants that? Raise your hand if that's something you're looking for. Many people spend a lot of money and go to a lot of effort to lower those risks in their lives. There's something we can do that will have a profound impact on lowering that. How many of you want more anxiety and more depression? These are some of the mental effects. Anybody? No, we kind of go out of our way and spend some money sometimes to lower anxiety and depression in our lives. How many of you would like a hardened heart? Spiritual ramification of this. Anyone? No? I mean, we do that sometimes in life. We think of it as a protective measure. If we harden our heart a little bit, it'll keep all of the bad and hurtful stuff out. Well, it doesn't do that, but it does keep all the good stuff out. We harden our hearts sometimes when we have been hurt by others or have um, been unloved somehow, and we try to harden our hearts to toughen up a little bit, and what we do is we close that vault door. It doesn't let anything in or out, but we still have all that negative stuff that was in there. Somehow, those the hurtful, bad things still find a way in, but we close ourselves off to all the good things. So what is it that we can do that will turn all of this around? Forgiveness. Forgiveness can turn all those things around. But let's be clear on what forgiveness is and what it is not. First, let's look at forgiveness and reconciliation. Those are two different things. Reconciliation is the restoring of a relationship, and that may or may not happen after forgiveness. After forgiveness happens, reconciliation is possible if the risks of being hurt again are low enough to take that chance. So let's be clear that reconciliation is an entirely different thing altogether and may or may not happen after forgiveness. Forgiveness is letting go of the emotional toll of the event that has us. It's hard to get our head around that. Let me have show you an illustration that might uh, show this better. All right, say you have a person that you have a grudge against. You walk into a small diner, small restaurant, and there that person sits. You are in a good mood heading in there, and then you see this person. How does your mood change? Okay, now you sit down, you order, you have a cup of coffee, whatever you like, and you notice that this person is not only there, but they're having a great time. They are laughing, those deep belly laughs. They're experiencing a lot of joy. What does that do to you and your joy, your happiness? Yeah, it's kind of cringy. Is your stomach kind of nodding up thinking about it? Is your neck and shoulders getting stiff or your lower back stiff? This is what is indicative that we need to forgive. 
when we have those feelings that control us, when we let those feelings control us from these past hurts, then we know that there's some forgiveness work that's necessary. Forgiveness is not letting, telling the other person that they're, that they get a jail, get out of jail free card. It is not saying, hey, everything is fine. It's a freeing of yourself from that emotional prison that you've locked yourself into. And there are different levels of hurt and clearing out some of those may require the support of a counselor or another professional. And if that's so, get that help, get that support because your health depends on it. So let's talk about how it's not only with people we know, it can be with total strangers. Anybody have a politician they're angry with right now? What happens inside here when you see that politician or those politicians? Does it rake anger or even rage rise up? When you see it across your newsfeed on social media or in the paper or wherever, does it bring all of those negative feelings up? Does it make you angry? Yeah. Another sign that sometimes we need to forgive complete strangers. And again, it's not saying, hey, what you do is totally fine. What it is doing, forgiveness is saying we will no longer be imprisoned by the negative emotions of you or of that event. So how do we do this? Well, it takes a little time and a little practice, but it's a muscle and a skill set that we can develop. Start small. Make a list of five people that maybe you could forgive and make these little things very easy things. Uh, for instance, I might start off with the 1984 San Diego Padres. They kept my Cubs from going to the World Series, and I was a little bit upset about that. So I might put them at the top of my list. There was also a kid that was mean to me in grade school. Maybe I'll put him next. And make a list of some things like that, that you can, and you don't have to interact with the other person to do this. You can, certainly you can, but this is work you can do within yourself. And you just spend time with the event and you just make the inner choice to let it depart. And it's not gonna happen in that instant, probably. I mean, it may, but when you keep focusing on that and focusing on the letting it depart and inside here, picture letting it go away. It's going to go away. So start with the small and easy things and then you're gonna get a little good at it. You're gonna get a little better. You're gonna build up those muscles. And as you work toward the things with more significance, with higher stakes, you're gonna have some momentum on your side. When I was a kid, there was a lot of snow in the 70s. <laughs> 70s, how could I be born in the 70s? Anyway, there was a lot of snow in the 70s and we would go outside and we would start with a little snowball and then we would start rolling it and it would get bigger and bigger and bigger. And soon we had the building blocks for a good snowman or woman. That's what you're doing here. You're starting small with the little things and getting some momentum, getting some wins for yourself, getting some confidence and some of the benefits that come from letting this stuff go. So that's my hope for you this week, that you can begin the process of building up your forgiveness muscles in yourself. And don't forget, put yourself on that list. Put yourself on that list. That's probably going to be the hardest one. But it's going to have some profound change and effects in your life. One last image I want to leave you with. When we hold on to grudges, we make happiness become a pie. And not in that good and fun way, but it becomes pie in the sense that there's only so much. And the people we hold grudges against 
they are stealing out all those pieces and we only have what's left. Our world becomes small when we hold grudges because when we go to places and they are there, it shrinks ourselves, it shrinks our joy and we wanna leave. Our world gets small. Get rid of the grudges. Learn how to forgive. Make it a daily practice. Work on it. And if you need support, reach out. This is so important. I will support you however I can in this process. So that's it for today. Again, I'm Melissa Ebkin, pastor of the Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Niantic, founder of Light Life and Love Ministries and Outreach for those who are spiritual but not religious or don't have a church affiliation and the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. And I wish you the best in spiritual health. Talk to you next Monday. Bye-bye.